Thank you very much to everybody for joining me today for this live LinkedIn masterclass session. I'm very excited to be hosting each and every one of you today. I know that a number of attendees could not make it, so uh, it looks like there's only a few, but I think we've got almost 20 people that booked for the session. So that is absolutely incredible. And it just shows me that there definitely is a need when it comes to utilizing social media platforms like LinkedIn to either find work, to get headhunted, or to really make a mark as a practitioner um, in business. So I'm going to apologize ahead of time if there are any issues with my video. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to um, to not having a video while we'll start talk because what we're going to be doing in any case is we are going to be looking at the LinkedIn platform live as I hold your hand and we actually go through um, LinkedIn and the different functionalities of it. Okay, so I am I'm dipping in and out of video. All right, so just a little bit about myself so you know that I'm not um I'm not just um, anybody that um, is pretending to know what she's talking about. Well, sometimes I do. <laughs> uh, but my name is Majena Almendro, and I am a registered psychometrist. I'm also a licensed coach. And besides doing psychometric assessments for individuals in terms of finding work, so I've got a, quite a nice understanding of psychological competencies, not just from a South African perspective, but globally as well, because I've done a lot of projects across uh, sort of Europe, uh, the UAE, Australia, as well as Canada. So got some knowledge when it comes to what are the desired psychological competencies. But on the other end, also a huge part of the business is helping you, the professional, in terms of positioning yourself in the market. So I don't just support professionals, but I also support entrepreneurs, health professionals like myself, in terms of running their own practices and really gaining some traction in doing so. So without any further ado, I'm going to start by taking you through the LinkedIn portal. As I did mention on email, we don't have time for questions because it is a very short session that we're doing today. The reason for that is I know how busy you are. I appreciate you making the time to be here today. And I just really wanted it to be punchy, impactful, and hence no questions during the live session. But I will hang around for a little bit after the session if you do have any questions. And as mentioned on email, very happy to answer your questions if you do post them to me on my email, which is magena at holiston.com. Alternatively, if we just head for info at holiston.com, that seems to be the easier one. Okay, so let's head on down to LinkedIn at this moment in time. Now, I'm sure that hopefully you should have a LinkedIn account. Uh, most people do. Um, and if you don't, <laughs> please, at least after today, ensure that you do open up your LinkedIn account. Righty-ho. So I'm going to be taking you through, obviously, my LinkedIn account. Um, because it's easiest, obviously, for confidentiality reasons, we can't be looking at anybody else's accounts today. Although I do have quite a plethora of uh, different <laughs> accounts on my my platforms, because I do assist. Sure, I've lost count, but many, many, many people I've assisted in terms of their LinkedIn. Okay, so I think most people are probably familiar with the notion of the Facebook account. And that's why I'm going to use my language interchangeably with Facebook terminology just to highlight exactly what I mean. So unlike Facebook, I mean, Facebook is a social networking uh, website. LinkedIn is a professional social networking website. But what makes LinkedIn really powerful, just in terms of the way in which they position themselves, it's just, it's remarkable. If you, if you think like a recruiter, if you put your, your headhunting hat on, or, you know, as a, as a recruiter, um, we look at different job uh, boards, such as your Peanut or Career Junction or, or Monster. And a lot of the capabilities are tied into LinkedIn. But of course, LinkedIn, you don't join it specifically to look for a job. I mean, a lot of professionals are LinkedIn. So it's just so clever in terms of 
attracting credible professionals to be on this platform, this professional platform. And of course, then they have monetized the one function. I mean, there's, there's many functions that they've actually monetized. But the one which, which is absolutely powerful is using it not just as a recruiter, but as a candidate as well. So I myself have worked on the recruiter side in terms of headhunting for talent. Uh, if you are a recruiter or if you've got any experience in the recruitment industry, then it's very similar to the way in which your typical PNETs or your career junctions work in terms of looking or utilizing those keywords in looking for your talent. But let's start with the basics now. So when you land on your LinkedIn page, this is what it looks like. Uh, this is your news feed. So as you can see, Holiston or myself actually advertised for today. And as you scroll down your news feed, you're going to be seeing content that has been shared by your connections, okay? But let's go through to my profile for now. Okay, so we're going to look at view profile. And in terms of just making sure that you've got all the basics ticked, Okay, so the first things first is you're going to want to make sure that you do have a photograph on LinkedIn. Okay, um, obviously, I mean, this is from a face value perspective, in any case, I'm sure you will agree with me that if a person doesn't have a face, it's just psychologically, it's just something where you're like, oh, dodge, <laughs> is this a bot? <laughs> is this spam? Okay, so it's very, very, very critical to have a photograph on your Facebook. Uh, I beg your pardon, on your LinkedIn, okay? And in terms of the photograph, it doesn't have to be a professional photograph as this one is over here, okay? So I did have some professional photos done last year. Um, but you know what? Most smartphones these days are very competent to capture a high-res photograph, so that, that's absolutely fine. So the big things I want to demonstrate for you with your photograph over here is you'll see that the background is white, okay? It doesn't have to be white, but as light as possible. And you want to make sure that you are looking at the camera, okay? You'll see as well, as a lady, I just ensured that I, you know, had some professional makeup done that day. Look, you don't have to do professional makeup, but just ensure that you do, you know, your face is looking nice and pretty. For the gentlemen that have joined us, ensure that you are clean shaven. If you do have a beard, please make sure that it's nice and neat and also that your hair is clean and neat as well, okay? So what you're looking for is in terms of your clothing, look, I mean, this is also industry specific, but I'm going to be giving you some generic advice here. If you want some more customized advice, please feel free to reach out to me personally. I mean, if you're in the arts or anything like that, things are a little bit different, but let's just err towards the side of caution. And we're gonna talk about your clothing. So ensure that you are wearing uh, dark clothing so black navy blue emerald green the darker the better i know i'm wearing a white shirt here but i've pi or, or, or combined it with a, a dark jacket okay a smart jacket um alongside my my white background and basically what that does is it really makes you sort of pop and people can see you nicely okay make sure that it's a nice head and shoulders Obviously, I mean, it's, it's super easy to do. You can change your photo, you can upload your photo here, you can crop, filter and adjust, and it's as easy as pie. Right, so I'm sure lots of you have seen billboards as you drive on the highway, okay? So your billboard over here is this smart little thing, okay? So I've customized mine to have my name uh, alongside my registrations or, or what I do and who I am. So, I mean, the generic um, LinkedIn, let's just have a look at somebody. I don't even know. Here we go. Let's have a look at uh, Aaliyah. Okay, she's one of my connections. So, the generic LinkedIn banner is pretty boring. Okay. It's not critical, but I tell you what, hey, people are visual, especially in our new digital age. So, you want something that's eye catching. And I promise you, this is going to take you five seconds okay maybe 10 seconds to do so over here i want to show you a very cool resource that i use every day of my life many of you will probably know what this resource is about but if you don't it is canva.com canva is basically a free uh, design platform obviously they make their money by having some things that they charge for like images or whatnot 
but most of Canva is, is, is absolutely free. So I want to quickly show you the LinkedIn banners that you can choose from here. Very easy to operate, okay? It's literally templates that you click and drag and you just populate with your information. So, I mean, this looks a bit familiar. That's because that's my banner over there. But as you can see, some really beautiful banners. Let's have a look here in terms of recently used, okay? So even if, let's say, for example, you see there, oh, dear. Oh, oh, no, that's not appropriate. It's absolutely fine. You can simply change the text like I'm going to do over here. So, Jenna, not Ma Jenna. Jenna Almendro. Okay, you can adjust it. Let's uh, say let's, I don't want to center it. I want it to be on the left. And let's say I change my font size so it's not too in your face. Okay, let's just move that one over there. And over here, I'm going to say that I am a registered uh, psychometrist. Okay, we can change our size. You just select it. You go to your font size over there. You can change it. You can move it around, make it look nice and snazzy. Perhaps over here, we're going to do that. That looks pretty smart. And obviously, oh dear, no, we don't want that picture. So over here, your left-hand side, you've got a whole bunch of different functions. So, I mean, here's your templates where we just were. If you want to change any image on any design, in fact, you go to Uploads and you can either search uh, for an image, okay? Uh, I beg your pardon, you're going to search for your images over there, okay? So let's say work. Okay. And you're going to see a whole bunch of um, images that they have related to, to work. <laughs> Some of it is a little bit arbitrary, uh, but there's a nice little one of a computer, okay? But let's go to uploads quickly. Now I'm going to show you another resource that I really want you to take notice of. As many of you may or may not in fact know, if you go to Google, okay, let's just quickly go to Google and you want to look for an image on work. Over here, all right. I mean, I used to do this when I was in school. You search on images and you're like, fantastic. I'm going to pick something. Oh, I like that one. Okay, guys, this is actually not legal. All right. That image is licensed to this particular website. In fact, look at that. It's, it's by Getty Images. Okay, so if you want to be using any image imagery for, for mainstream use, you have to pay for it. You cannot be stealing stuff off of Google. That's the first thing. And the second thing is generally, if you do find pictures off of Google, a lot of the time, the, the resolution is not going to be as high as if it was a licensed image. So am I telling you to go and purchase images? Absolutely not. Okay, if you go to a website called www.unsplash.com, you can find an absolute ton of fantastic high res images that are free. Okay, so I'm sure there are lots of other platforms. I used to use another one uh, back in the day, but this is my favorite one at this moment in time, is unsplash.com. All you do is you find a nice one that you really like. So I like this one. He's using his hand gestures. So I'm going to download this image. Okay, so what they say is, hey, please won't you just give us a thanks. Okay, but if you're feeling kind or not, I mean, that's your prerogative. And it's going to download onto your computer. You can see that it's already downloaded. So let's go back to Canva. I hope I'm not speaking too quickly. I'm now going to upload an image from my device. And we should see it over here in downloads. There it is. So I double click on that. As you can see, it takes a little bit of time. That blue bar will continue until the image is uploaded. And almost Bob's your uncle, you're going to then have your image dragged across into your, your LinkedIn banner. So it's literally, I mean, how long did that take me with some waffling? I think that took me about three minutes to explain to you. Okay, so I click and I drag it over here. Oops, so I don't like that. Let's crop it quickly. Just showing you the different functions that we do have with Canva. 
Wonderful. Okay, and then I download it. FYI, please always ensure that any imagery that you use is downloaded in PNG. Okay, JPEG is, is the popular one, but PNG is the preferential one. And you can download it, preparing your design. Thank you so much. They're going to try and sell you the paid for version. No thanks. Uh, just quick side note, guys. I have used Canva, uh, the paid for option before. Whew, I hope they don't shoot me for saying this. Um, it actually wasn't worth my time uh, or money. So the, the free version is, is perfect. Okay. So yes, you've downloaded your banner and that is canva.com. And please don't use Google to steal images. Rather use credible sites like unsplash.com. Excellent. Okay, so that is your banner. All right. Of course, we've got your name. I'm not too sure if you are aware, but LinkedIn do have a very cool function where you can actually record the pronunciation of your name, which of course works for me because I've got quite a tricky name. <laughs> and then the person can actually listen to the pronunciation. <laughs> okay, so that's the, the, the Polish way in, in terms of pronouncing my name. Okay, when it comes to your title, here's a big one for those of you that are perhaps unemployed, okay? please don't state unemployed or looking for work or, you know, desperate or <laughs> I'm kidding, but it just, um, it leaves a bad taste in my mouth. I don't want to see that if you are employed or rather if you are unemployed, rather just state what your speciality is because there is a function where you can actually let your network or more specifically recruiters know that you are on the market. It does not have to be over here. Okay. Um, so what I've said is obviously a registered psychometrist, certified coach, CV writer, and LinkedIn expert, as well as thought leader. So it's 150 characters or basically three seconds to really make a mark in terms of your expertise. My advice is don't, don't just have your profession. So I'm an accountant. Have something such as astute accountant with uh, 10 years experience, or perhaps you're an accountant with a CA degree put that CA uh, qualification there as well. So um, yes, less is more, but make it punchy and really captivate your audience with your title. Okay, let's move down to, I mentioned this before in terms of if you are unemployed and you're looking for work. So you're going to click on this little function over here. Okay, so it basically, it, it adds your job preferences in terms of alerting recruiters that you actually are in the market. That's why I say don't use your title to say you're unemployed, rather just change things up over here. In terms of your job titles, you can only select up to five titles, okay? Um, so let's say consultant, uh, what else am I? Uh, HR, HR person, I should say HR, human resources specialist, recruiter. Uh, and what else can I be? Hey, I'm also known as an author here. Okay, so if I try and, let's put something funny in there. Let's try and put in a six one. One, two, three, four, five. You're going to see it's going to say, uh uh, uh uh, uh uh. You need to choose what your five, your top five. Um, keywords are for your job titles. In terms of location, you can be as granular or as broad as you wish. Okay, so let's say specifically I'm looking for something in Bedford View where I live. That's absolutely fine. Okay, but maybe I want to be really broad as well. Okay, so I'm being a little bit superfluous by repeating myself here. Don't do that. Um, if you really are specific on the areas that you, you want to work in, for example, I don't want to be sitting in traffic for, for more than an hour, then be specific with those areas. Okay, so Santon CBD, for example. Once again, you can only put up to five job locations in this category. Now, if you are a job seeker that is looking to immigrate from South Africa, I would recommend being a little bit more general. Obviously, this is different if you've got a, um, a lease or if you're going to be staying with family as you enter uh, your new country, whether that be Europe, so your Canada or Australia or whatnot. So if you are specific, if you've got a lease, if you've got an address, then be specific like I've been here in terms of South Africa. 
But if, for example, you are emigrating to the United Kingdom, my recommendation, unless you know exactly where you want to be living in the United Kingdom, but my recommendation is then just uh, popping in the United Kingdom like that. Okay. Uh, let's just change this. Okay, well, let's, let's do that quickly. All right, so you can also alert your recruiters if you're immediately available or if you're flexible, you're just casually browsing. And over here, you can actually select as many or as few as you want in terms of the type of job that you're looking for. Okay, so once you've populated your information over there, now you get to choose who gets to see who. Uh, I beg your pardon, that you are open. My advice, ladies and gentlemen, is don't... This is just my personal preference here. I would be reticent about making all LinkedIn members know that you are looking for work. Okay, so what happens over here is you actually get a, a nice little banner on your face. Okay, so that people can quickly spot that you are certainly open to work. Now, the reason that I'm reticent about telling the whole world that you're open to work is the fact that perhaps you're currently employed at the moment and you don't want your employer knowing that you're looking for another opportunity. Or perhaps from my side, okay, so this is more from a PR perspective. You must understand that I've got a, a large portion of my brain that's also dedicated to marketing, okay? So I combine my, my psychological expertise with my marketing brain. And as soon as I see somebody that is advertising to the whole world that they're looking for a job, Immediately, if the association is, oh, okay, mm, this is just another person that's, that's looking for a job, okay? As a recruiter, I want to be offering my client some, some really shit hot talent, okay? And that's why I like headhunting for my talent, all right? Um, if I know that that person is advertising to the whole world that they're open to work, it leads me to believe that they may be desperate. Even if you are desperate, it makes me think, oh, goodness, you know. Is this person going to be non-committal? If something better comes along, could they perhaps grab another opportunity? You know, how loyal are they? It makes me question these things. Is it unfair? Absolutely. Okay. But unfortunately, we don't live in a fair world. So my advice is to rather, if you are scouting for work, ensure that it is, it is open to your recruiters only. And then you're going to add that to your profile. You will also get an email notification to state that you have now opened yourself up to recruiters. But remember that not every Tom, Dick and Harry can see this. Okay, It's only members who have paid for the recruitment function of LinkedIn who will be able to see that you are on the market. So over here, you can see this little gold LinkedIn um, logo. That means that I am a premium member. But at this moment in time, I'm only a premium member for an individual use, okay? There are different tiers in terms of LinkedIn. So not even I, because I'm no longer in this moment in time using the recruiter function of LinkedIn, not even I can see that you are on the market. It is only purely for recruiters who have paid for that function, okay? As a business owner, it's also nice to let your clientele know about your different services that you can offer um, your, your audience, okay? And obviously, you can edit it like that, all right? I'm just keeping an eye on time, so I'm going to be moving quite quickly now. Okay, so let's finish this profile off, and then we're going to discuss, you know, the whys and, and start to apply for some, some jobs. Okay, so your about is a nice little summary of who you are. Now, my advice over here is let's err towards caution in terms of international best practice, which is writing in third person. So you really just want to encapsulate what you get at, uh, what you're able to do, and what you're able to offer that client. At the end of the day, as a job seeker, what I need you to do is I need you to put on your business hat. Pretend that you are a business owner, even if you're not. And I want you to think like them. Why would I want to hire me? Okay, how does this person, how's this person going to scratch my itch? That is the, the mindset that you need to be thinking when you start populating this. Just so you know, this little pencil over here is your edit pencil. Okay, so you can edit as you wish. 
feature content. I love this. Do you know that virtually perhaps maybe one in 10 people I see utilize this, this, this uh, featured content part. And it's such a shame because, I mean, it, it really is a fantastic opportunity to showcase uh, some of your work. So, I mean, not everybody has got a YouTube channel. Not everybody has got, um, I don't know, an online portfolio or a, a CV that's a website or any of those things. That's absolutely fine. But over here with your featured content, I mean, you could even upload your Word version of your CV. What I would recommend, however, just from a data protection perspective, is please don't put your telephone number over here. Rather, just put your email address, okay? Otherwise, you are going to be hounded. Uh, believe it or not, there are some interesting characters on LinkedIn as well, <laughs> okay? Um, and perhaps you have... Perhaps you have done a interview and um, perhaps you've done some PR. Maybe the company that you're working with is a lovely article that they've posted on their website. And simply what you do is you post the URL over here. So you can choose to show a link. OK, it's super easy. You literally you, you post the URL, you add it. I'm not going to do that right now. But it actually asks you what would you like to add in your featured content? You can add posts, you can add actual articles like PDFs. Maybe, you know, you're really proud of your thesis and you've got a little summary page, you could upload that. Perhaps you've got some lovely photographs of you winning an award at your company, holding that beautiful trophy, you can upload that. So, I mean, anything that's visual, anything that's credible, because this is going to add to your credibility. Okay, so that is your featured content. Okay, we're going to come back to your, your metrics in just a bit, but your activity. So remember, I showed you, if we go back to home quickly, um, I called it the news feed, okay, similar to, to Facebook. But over here, we have a look at your news feed. So if you've posted something and you're like, oh gosh, what, what, what did I post again? Or, hmm, let's just have a look at my activity. Let's go back to your profile. And over here, you're going to see in terms of your activity now if you do a formal linkedin course they say that you should be um, active on linkedin for three to four times a day <laughs> um yeah that's pretty heavy hey um look for me once a day is absolutely fine so you'll see that i upload a lot of my own content um but i also obviously i like a lot of other people's content or i share uh, people's content as well not willy-nilly, okay, so please be quite uh, strategic in the content that you are consuming and that you are sharing. And whilst we are on that note very quickly, social media rule, okay, I know a lot of you are not interested in social media or digital marketing, I mean, this is not your business, but just so that you are aware, um, the social media rule goes like this, the 1990 um Okay, so 90% of the world's population, they consume online media like this, okay? 9% of the world's population will share that content, and 1% actually create content. You might be thinking now, okay, I'm a job seeker, like why on earth do I need to be creating content? That's just rubbish, okay? If you're wanting to build credibility as uh, somebody that's competent within your field, perhaps a thought leader, or perhaps you are an entrepreneur or a business owner and you want to get noticed by your followers, by your fans, okay? You want them to, to take notice of what you're doing. That is why you want to be creating content. Now, you might think for a second, but hang on, I've got nothing to say. I'm a bookkeeper, okay? Like, who's going to listen to me? Listen, I can tell you now categorically, everybody has possession of some knowledge that somebody else wants to know, all right? So, yes, fine, maybe you are that bookkeeper, but perhaps you could do, hey, these are five tips that help me manage my personal finance as well, okay? And you can maybe spin it off the whole thing. You know, bookkeepers and accountants, usually they, they, their books aren't in order. Hey, here's what you need to do to ensure that yours are. Um, so I promise you, everybody has got the capacity to create content, it, it gains traction people start to take you seriously it's super easy to do let's quickly go here to the status update 
So if you want to start a post, you can type something like, you know, I don't know. <laughs> don't say, hey, hope you're having a great day. This is not Facebook. All right. Um, but let's say, for example, you want to write an article. <clears throat> all you're going to do is click on that little link that says article over here. Once again, utilize your fabulous uh, photographs from Unsplash. Don't steal your imagery. Okay. Uh, have a nice captivating headline, about five words or so. And over here, you can write your, your content. Okay. What I would recommend is actually writing your article onto a Word document. Okay. Uh, the reason for this is obviously you can do a spell check if you're not using any web application that checks your spelling. And I don't know if a lot of you know this function. So to proofread your own items, I would recommend that you either get somebody else to read it or print it and read it. Okay. But my personal favorite in terms of checking that I haven't made any grammatical errors is in Word. They've got the read back function. And it actually reads back your writing to you. So it just, it's very different in terms of writing, you physically writing something or having someone, whether that be a human or a computer, actually read it back to you. So copy and paste it into uh, that section on LinkedIn. Okay, but let's go back to our profile over here. Marvelous, marvelous. Okay, so we've just finished up with our featured content. We're coming back to your metrics and, of course, your activity. Here is your experience. All right, so the rule of thumb when it comes to your experience is unlike your CV, so your CV is going to capture all your experience. Okay, obviously what you did when you were 18 years old, um, it's, you know, it's going to be extremely summarized. You're only going to have the detail with your most recent uh, work. But when it comes to LinkedIn, we're looking at about, say, eight, possibly 10 years going back in time. So please don't put the fact that you worked at a restaurant when you were 16 into LinkedIn. It's, it's really unnecessary. Perhaps you're in your 60s. Again, you can go back by a decade. You don't have to put every single role you've ever um you've ever been in. Obviously, your most recent role is going to have the most detail over here. And as you go along, less and less detail is required. All right. Um, in terms of populating it, again, super easy. You click on the little pencil, you put your title, employment type, the company, your location, your dates, and of course, you, your content over here. Now, what's really cool, I've showed you the featured content at the top. But in terms of each role, perhaps you, I don't know, patented a law or uh, created a product or, or did something very cool. What you can actually do is you can put a link to uh, that particular URL. Okay, so not don't do a general link like I'm doing now, but perhaps, I don't know. Okay, so perhaps I want to really demonstrate my portfolio of writing. So I put a hyperlink there, I add it, and Bob's your uncle. Okay, and now you're being rude to me. So let's just do this. Probably. Let's copy and paste it over there. And it just gives some lovely texture and variety in terms of your role. So I would also encourage you to have some featured content, not just at the top of your profile, but actually within the content of your experience as well, okay? Remember, we want to come across as credible, authentic uh, uh, experts within our, our realms of, of what we do, okay? So that was our experience. Now we get to education, all right? So LinkedIn is quite specific when it comes to certifications as well as education. Education is primarily for your postgraduate, sorry, 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 for your uh, tertiary education. So if you went to a college or a university, you're going to capture it over here. Okay, once again, if you're going to add a new one, just plus, you input your school, the qualification, the year of study, you can leave, I mean, a lot of this is like, what? What is that? So you can leave some of the stuff out. Okay, is somebody speaking to me? Oh, thank you. Ah, oh, thank you, Tubby Singh. It's my pleasure. Okay. 
Um, and obviously, if you want to manipulate anything, you edit it like that. Licenses and certifications come over here. You add them by clicking on the plus. Okay. You can also input some volunteer experience. All right. Skills and endorsements. Okay. So this is a very important one. If you have, which you probably haven't because you're here today, but as a recruiter or as a talent scout, I've worked on the back end looking for talent, right? And when I'm looking for talent, I, as the recruiter, have got up to eight keywords to utilize in terms of sourcing my talent. You, as the candidate, however, are very fortunate in that you have 50 keywords or competencies um, that you can actually utilize over here. So if you add a new skill, okay, so, you know, I've, I've practiced what I've preached and unfortunately I've reached the limit of my 50 skills. <laughs> but if you go there, you're actually going to have some suggestions uh, from LinkedIn uh, based on your profile. I would highly recommend that you exhaust this and you actually reach that 50 limit, okay? It's hard skills, it's soft skills. So whether it be, you know, you feel that you're a good leader, you're going to type in something like, let's just see if I could take something away here. Okay, crumbs, I can't. Um, let's edit this. Okay, so I'm going to delete some stuff. Let's delete this, this, and this. Okay, so I'm going to add a new skill over here. So as you can see that LinkedIn has recommended some skills that it thinks that I would align to. But what I can do as well is I can actually start typing in stuff. And as I start to type in leadership, it's going to give me the different types of leadership. Okay. And then I simply add it over there. All right. So that's if you want to add a new skill. If you want to edit your skills, you go over here. Now, please ensure that you select your top three skills. Mine are strategic planning, psychology, and consulting. But for example, if I want to change that, I'm going to unpin those competencies or those skills, and I'm going to select new ones. Okay, I've just reselected the same ones, and you're going to save it. Unfortunately, you can't go more than three. Okay. All right, so this is very important, particularly if you are scouting for work, or if you just are casually wanting to get noticed by, by headhunters. Recommendations. Now, I'm sure you'll agree that we trust our friends and our family a heck of a lot more than we do a magazine article. And I mean, the example I used just the other day when I was doing an interview with the University of Johannesburg is if you see a fantastic ad in the U magazine of a great chocolate cake being sold at, at Woolworths, it might stick in your mind for about five seconds. But let's say it's your husband's birthday coming up and you really want to um, purchase a lovely cake for him. Uh, you're going to ask your friends what they think. And you're going to trust your friends far more than you would a magazine or a billboard or anything like that. And I mean, that's the whole sort of progression in terms of um, digital media, in terms of PR. We trust humans as opposed to being, you know, trusting um, a paid for ad all right so so this is your evidence in terms of you are who you say you are and those are your testimonials now unfortunately if you've got a wonderful reference letter written from your ex-employer or from your colleague there is no function over here at least to to upload it you could if you wanted to uh, upload that testimonial in your featured content or perhaps at a previous job you could upload it over here just remember what i said about data protection rather just have that person's email address don't have their personal contact details please um, but in terms of the actual testimonials when it comes to linkedin you're going to actually have to ask for a recommendation okay so hey let's use my husband <laughs> Hey, God. So, no, I'm not going to say he's my husband because it actually doesn't even offer me that there. Thank God. But let's just say, hypothetically, he's going to know that this was a joke, so don't stress. Garth actually managed me, and my position at the time was back when I was a radio station manager. And it populates an automated message over here saying, How's it, Garth? 
won't you please write me a recommendation? And you can, of course, tweet this and say, babes, don't take this seriously. Dot, dot, dot. So what will happen on his side is he's going to receive an email over here. Okay. And on that email, it's going to see, hey, Garth, Magena Almendras asked for a reference. Where did it go? Where did it go? Um, and basically, let's just see if I can search within this, just so I can show you exactly what it looks like. But it's basically a link that that person is going to click on, okay? And they have to then write in their beautiful little recommendation upon you. Don't panic if somebody writes something that you are not entirely happy with. <laughs> Maybe they say you were a mediocre worker and you're like, cheapers I don't want that reflected on my LinkedIn there is an option to in fact accept or reject that particular testimonial so everything actually has to go through you don't panic about um, you know some something looking a bit yucky so as as I said over here it's going to come down as a link and then you review it over there and you can add it to your profile. Now, the best tactic I've personally found when it comes to looking for testimonials is this is just my personal style, but I generally give a testimonial and then I feel that I'm at liberty to then say, hey, how's it guy? Could you please write me a testimonial in return? OK, so you'll see that I've I've given 11 testimonials. And I then feel pretty happy to ask that person to then recommend me to. Okay, so this is your evidence that you are who you say you are. Okay, let's talk about accomplishments. <coughs> I beg your pardon. So over here you can do, you can sort of make note of any short courses that you've done. Particularly when it comes to psychometrists, we've got a lot of accreditations that we do, so you could list it over here. In terms of any honors and awards that you've done, your languages, projects, as well as publications. Okay, so again, if you want to add anything, you just click on the plus. As you can see, publications, patents, courses, projects, etc., etc. And that's basically it, okay? Obviously, your interests are the companies that you follow, all right? But let's just quickly go to the top of your LinkedIn profile over here. And I've taken you through step-by-step step how to add information. But the quick way to do this is if you want to add a profile section, it's got everything summarized right over here. Okay. If you'd like to see what your LinkedIn CV looks like, you simply go to more and you save to PDF. Okay. Sometimes talent scouts and recruiters will in fact use this document um, to compare apples with apples. Typically in recruitment, what we do is when we receive a whole bunch of CVs, we ensure that they all look the same so that when we put them forward to clients, um, they're comparing apples with apples. And that is what your LinkedIn CV is going to look like. Okay. Let's quickly have a look at your metrics. So, I mean, you don't have to be a data scientist to appreciate your metrics, but it's just, I mean, this is interesting. So if you're sitting with like zero over here, which believe it or not, a lot of people are, or maybe one or two, you're not really getting noticed in the market. Okay, so in the last week, I have had 212 people who have viewed my profile. It's not bad. Um, just a quick one whilst I see this in my, 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 my site. All star means that I have basically ticked all the boxes when it comes to LinkedIn. It is not difficult to get to an all star status. In fact, you could just have a photograph, your title, small summary, and even you wouldn't even have to have all this content, just some experiences and some skills, and you would have all star status. So please ensure that you get to that all-star status. But let's start to click and have a look at our metrics, okay? So you can start to be like, oh, okay, so sure. I've actually had a decrease in my viewers of 44%. What did I do differently? And you can go back into your timeline, have a look at your, um, your activity over here during that time. And be like, sure, what did I do differently? What, 
what did people not enjoy? This is especially good for entrepreneurs or, or business owners is what sort of content was I doing at that moment in time um, that, that people didn't really appreciate too much. Okay, what's working, what's not working? What are my, uh, my audiences actually engaging and enjoying? You can have a look and see who actually clicked on your, your views. Okay, so who's taking notice of what you're, you're doing and what you're saying. And then of course, the big one for those of you that are uh, looking for work, sure. I have appeared in 78 searches um, this week. Okay, so from the weeks of the 22nd to the 29th of September. So sure, wow. Those are some interesting metrics in terms of who is, is looking me up. All right. So I realize we've spent a really incredibly quick uh, amount of time going through the actual LinkedIn profile. All right. Um, but I really, 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 really need to take you through to this beautiful function over here. So at the top tab, okay, you can see home, your network. Okay, let's quickly just answer this. Oh, how's it, Isabel? Isabel's actually with us today. Um, in terms of your network, a lot of people ask, okay, do I need to personally know the person on LinkedIn? Okay, because Facebook, look, I mean, it depends who you are, really. But um, Facebook generally is people that you know. Um, however, when it comes to LinkedIn, the, the plain and simple, <laughs> how's it, Isabel? The plain and simple answer is no, you actually don't have to personally know that person. If you are scouting for work, okay, and let's say, for example, you're using job boards like your Peanut or your Indeed or your Reeb or whatever, whatever it is, you're highly likely going to get a name of a recruiter in that job ad, okay? So after your application, do yourself a favor and actually find the person on LinkedIn and connect with them, all right? If you are a business owner, what you want to be doing is I don't know what radio station you listen to, but perhaps you listen to 5FM and you really enjoy Nicole Silver's show and you perhaps like the opportunity for her to take notice of you and put her on your show so that she can get some, some, some attention. Look up Nicole De Silva, connect with her, and um, you know then she will, hopefully she connects with you, but she will then have the opportunity to look at the content that you're writing on your blogs, to look at the previous interviews that you've done. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is a tactic that I've personally employed. I have in my business career at Holiston, not in my marketing career at the radio station, I have never released a, um, uh, a public, what do you call it? Um, a press release, I beg your pardon. I've never released a press release in Holiston for the media to invite me for an interview. Every single television, national radio, or any other interview that I've done has been purely by invite. And the way in which that's happened is because I'm connected with people that have looked at my work, they've, they've consumed my work, and they've been like, oh my goodness, this would be amazing on my show. And that is how I've gotten as much publicity and PR as I have. Um, it's not begging, it's not somebody doing me a favor because I have been in radio, but it's actually people taking notice of the content that I'm putting out there. So that's a big one for business owners. Okay, so, so that's your network, cheap as I can waffle. Jobs is what we're going to visit now. Obviously, your messaging is your emails, emails that are sent on LinkedIn and notifications very similar to, to Facebook. All right, so I want to quickly show you the jobs function because this is extremely sexy, okay? Now, if you are actively looking for a job, many of these functions work similarly to your job boards, your typical job boards, okay? But what is attractive about LinkedIn is because everyone's on LinkedIn, okay? The who's who is on LinkedIn. Um, I'm not saying it's not important to be on the PNETs or the Careers24. It's absolutely important to, to be on those portals. I've used them as well when I've been looking for uh, talent in the IT sphere. Um, but, but this is a very sexy function as well. Um, and it's not that difficult. Okay, so over here, we can see, ooh, here are some roles. They're very interesting, some lovely um, 
companies. This looks great. Oh my goodness, wonderful. Okay, but I want to sh start showing you how to utilize this effectively. So let's say Magena is looking for a role of coach. Okay, so I'm going to type in my desired role over there. As soon as I typed it in, it went, oh, you want a job as a coach in South Africa. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 stop. I'm not willing to, uh, you know, uh, relocate. I want a job as a coach in Gauteng. Okay. So already I've got a list of all these beautiful job opportunities on the left hand side. But you know what? 440 results. I ain't got time to look at that. I want to filter even more. You are going to start to work like a recruiter. Okay, so a recruiter's got exactly the same um, features on the back end on LinkedIn as well as your job portals. Okay, so I want to say, you know what? Let's really just pay attention to the most recent roles. So I'm going to look at what was posted in the last 24 hours. Right, in terms of my experience level, no, I don't want to be doing an internship. Thank you very much. I would probably consider myself a mid to senior level. Okay, so I can apply that. Um, companies, I mean, you can either look for a particular company, okay, or if you're open to that, just leave it blank. The job type, no, I want full time. Thank you very much. No, I don't want it to be remote. This is one of my personal favorites in terms of LinkedIn features. Okay, let me just activate it. And then I'm going to, okay, actually I'm not gonna activate it because there's only one there. I'm going to explain it to you now. So let's say, okay, I'm very happy with those filters in terms of the role as coach. What I'm going to do now is, do you remember there were 440 results? I've now filtered it down to five results for today, which I'm going to, well, I'm going to read through the job description and apply for, but I'm also going to turn on this job alert. So basically what will happen is every day or once a week, but let's say every day, I am going to be notified on email. I prefer email as opposed to the phone of new positions which become available. So I've now created a job alert, okay. Now I want to take you into the actual applications of a particular, of a particular, this is actually terrible, a particular role. <laughs> no, the reason I say that is because, I mean, I'm seeing a lot of stuff, it's probably got within here, coaching um, team members or whatnot, but I'm not looking to, well, actually account director, let's have a look at this. Okay, so the account director is to lead a portfolio of clients as well as the account management team. Okay, so this is not bad, I like this, okay? It's definitely capitalizing on my skill sets as a coach. Okay, so I, I spotted the job over there and on the right-hand side, I can have a look and I can see, I can start to see, you know, just exactly what is on offer. So we can see, oh dear, first things first, remember my skills, those 50 skills I populated, um, I only matched two out of 10 of those skills. So uh, that's not too good, but never mind. There's already been 44 applicants that have applied for this job role. Ish, there's a lot of competition. This company, uh, it's between 51 to 200 employees and the industry is marketing and advertising. Okay, so look, what I am going to say to you in terms of these metrics over here is that this is only this along with your your metrics that I showed you on your profile is only available to you if you are a premium user. Now, there are ways to bypass this. Let's quickly unpack exactly what what are um, what I, what am I guessing if I become a premium user? So most notably you get access to this particular data, which is very interesting. You can see how many people have a bachelor's degree, um, you know, sort of how many people, where do they live, uh, where they applied from, X, Y, Z. You can see some lovely data on the company as well, okay, which is really useful. Now, there are two ways to bypass this. The first way, okay, not bypass it, but 
you'll get what I'm saying. The first way is to sign up for the free version of LinkedIn. Now, what it does is, let's say, for example, you are actively looking for a position, okay? What it does is it gives you 30 days free use of LinkedIn, where you can actually start to utilize these different um, fancy things. If it works for you, you can continue your membership. But what you can do, I know it's a little bit cheeky and sneaky, but you can terminate your membership and you will not be billed for. You are looking at about 350 to 400 rand per month. So it's not cheap. It is expensive, especially if you're doing this as an uh, individual and not a company. Look, the company's versions, when you start using the recruitment packages, they're in the thousands. So if you are a talent scout, be aware LinkedIn is very expensive if you're looking for talent. But if you're an individual, it is quite costly. So that's the first thing is take advantage of the, the free the trial version. OK, um, unfortunately, I can't show you that now because usually it would be over here. It would be like try LinkedIn for free. OK, obviously, I'm paying for LinkedIn at this moment in time because I utilize it not just for myself, but for my clients as well. Now, the second way in which you can do this is I love this. If you're scouting for a job, you want to make sure that, OK, You've heard about ATS, right? Automatic tracking software. And that is when the recruiter or the talent scout has actually identified the key words that they are looking for in that particular uh, candidate. Okay. Now, before your CV even lands on their desk, if you have not met um, these keywords, you are not even going to have your CV land on their desk or in the inbox okay because there are automatic processes from linkedin side where i actually programmed linkedin to flush out the cvs um, that i didn't even want to see i could choose if i wanted them to meet let's say 10 skills but sometimes you could even choose your talent to meet all 10 sorry you can choose if you want them to meet so five skills seven skills but a lot of the time, recruiters, because unfortunately, there is a lot of talent on the market out there at the moment, we actually select um, 10 skills that we wanted to be matched to. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to use your first month of your trial. You could use LinkedIn or you could use Google. In terms of Googling um, typical account director or coach or whatever roles, and having a look at those keywords um, under critical competencies. But from a LinkedIn perspective, they're going to be here, your top skills. And make sure that you have these skills encapsulated in those 50 keywords that I spoke to you about. Because it's highly likely when you are looking for a particular role, job descriptions are tweaked, okay, um, from, from role to role, and obviously from company culture to company culture. But generally, those core competencies are pretty much the same. OK, so so that would be my advice in terms of bypassing the system and ensuring that you meet the application. Now, there are three ways to apply for a role on LinkedIn. My personal favorite is the easy apply way. What you do is you click on easy apply. You populate your information over here. OK, so you put your phone number in, X, Y, Z, your email address. OK, what you let's see, what you can do is you can actually upload your resume. OK, so you upload it over there. Uh, let's just do this. OK, um, also, here's another tip. Follow the Brave group to stay up to date with their page. That's great. Um, okay, I'm going to be really cheeky, but it's fine. I'm going to be flushed out of the system, most probably, but I'm going to submit my application. Okay. With some of the clients, they actually... Um, okay, Isabel. Many of the LinkedIn job alerts redirect to Peanut Zigo. Okay, all right. So I'm so glad that you brought that up because that's the next part about... Um, uh, that I'm going to talk about and we've reached one o'clock so I do apologize that I've gone over time if you need to leave that's absolutely fine you will get a copy of this recording
Okay, so yes, Isabel, you've got two parts to your question here. So I'm going to answer both of them. Let's just quickly finish what I was saying here. From a recruitment perspective, we can actually program LinkedIn to give the candidate a questionnaire which they then have to complete. So as you can see here, have you completed a bachelor's degree? Oh, okay, they've only given me one question. This was another way in which they can filter out their talent, okay? And I've utilized it personally when I did some work with uh, BASA, the Board of Airlines Representatives of South Africa, is we actually created a little questionnaire and flushed out a whole bunch of, 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 of people because prior to that we had 2,000 applications a day <laughs> which was yeah pretty intense so yeah so just bearing in mind that now as mentioned there are three ways in which you can apply the first was the easy LinkedIn let's quickly just um, um, change these filters because I want to start demonstrating you the two other ways so we've discussed number one uh, LinkedIn Easy Apply. Okay, uh, let's just clear this. Okay, now the next way, as Isabel very aptly noted, was that it redirects you to a new page. Okay, so let's just have a look over here. So it's either going to redirect you to another job board like your PNET or Careers 24, or it's going to redirect you to the company website. Okay, so let's just look at a practical example quickly. Um, I know for a fact this is not an easy apply because it doesn't have that logo over here, but I can't tell if it's going to redirect me to the website or... Okay, so as we can see, um, Nova Pioneer, this particular job application has redirected me to their personal website. And as you can see, they have actually programmed their own little questionnaire over here. Okay, this is their way of flushing out uh, candidates that they don't want to see. But they've also, they're pretty clever over here. Hmm. They've integrated their application with your profile on the job board called Indeed. So you could actually even apply through the recruitment uh, uh, portal but I want to specifically now demonstrate to you how what it looks like if we apply for a job and it takes us to a job board so that I can answer you Isabel I'm sure lots of people have got the same question as well country dogs <coughs> okay cool so this is a specific job board for um what you call it um people within, let's just see this quickly. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, keep people within the IT sphere, all right? Um, it's not just IT. I've actually, to be honest with you, this is, this is probably one of the smaller guys. So this has now redirected me to a job board and I would like to apply. So the pain in the bum over here is that you've actually got to now create an account. What I would recommend you do is um, select no more than three, sometimes one is enough, but no more than three job boards. The big ones that I know that my recruiter peers use pretty often is PNET, definitely. I've personally used PNET to look for talent before. Uh, Careers24, as well as Career Junction. Okay, I've never actually seen computer jobs before. Because what you're going to do is when you create your profile on those popular platforms, and it redirects you. You're not going to have to sit and you know complete your profile on on hundreds of different uh, job portals. Okay, so uh, Murphy's Law, I mean, or Murphy's Luck that we landed on this particular one that I've never seen before. Um, but let's say you really want to apply for this particular job over here. What you can do is then create a profile and and link it in. Now, quickly to answer Isabella's question. Um, just so that you are aware, no, the answer is these job um, boards have actually got <laughs> their own competencies or keywords that the recruiters uh, programmed in. And it's not necessarily identical to LinkedIn's, okay? But as a HR professional, okay, when we create J JDs or, or job descriptions, they are Obviously, like I said before, role dependent, uh, industry dependent, and company dependent. 
but there are critical competencies in typical roles, okay? So, for example, if I'm looking for an accountant, typically those critical competencies are things like analytical thinking skills, financial acumen, integrity, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So do some research in terms of your particular role. Use Google and LinkedIn by, and look at those top uh, competencies and keywords over there because it is highly likely that is, it's going to be similar. Not identical, but very similar to the job boards um, that you are a part of. And I truly hope that that has answered your question, Isabel. Okay, uh, let's just have a look and see. Thanks. <laughs> it's my pleasure. Okay, cool, guys. So whew, we're six minutes over time. Um, but that's basically what I wanted to show you in terms of how to work LinkedIn. Um, I'm sure for those of you that are very new to this, it looks extremely complex and scary and whatever. Promise you it's not that difficult. Practice makes perfect. Um, please download the app. I don't get paid to say this, guys. Um, I am an independent consultant, but it makes life easier if you've got the app on your phone because when you're going to be notified about positions, they're definitely going to be popping up over here, okay? Um, and of course, if you've created those, those job alerts, it's going to pop up on your email as well. So we're going to conclude with that. I know I've said a heck of a lot. I've probably overwhelmed you with information, but I hope that I've touched all the bases. The email attachment that I sent to you, um, it's written from the perspective as a business owner, but I want you to understand that even as a candidate, you need to speak the business language, okay? So you need to position yourself. You've almost got to think of yourself as not a commodity, but you've got to position yourself as, why should they hire me, okay? Your LinkedIn profile, it's great and it's pretty and it's wonderful, but it's not to elevate you. It's to come across as, what can I do for my employer? Or what can I do for my client? Why would they want to work with me? Okay, so that's the mindset that you've got to encapsulate. So. Um, a lot of the, the detail in the guide is for our entrepreneur peers in terms of capitalizing on um, other features for business. But a lot of the, the concepts are the same in terms of sharing credible content, in terms of who to connect with, in terms of how to structure uh, your titles and so on and so forth. So without any further ado, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank each and every one of you for joining me today. You will receive details on how to access this recording in a private space. Please don't share your login details with, with every Tom, Dick and Harry. You have paid to attend this, so please treat it confidentially. And I am going to open for questions just for a couple of minutes. Okay, so it appears that we we don't have any questions. Let's just give it a couple of more minutes. I don't see anything coming through at this moment in time. Um, just a quick one as well. If you do need more, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Okay, so you'll see in terms of uploading it in Word format. So the actual physical CV that I've uploaded over here is in PDF. Okay. Um, LinkedIn's a funny one. They actually, they, it looks very odd. But I know, yeah, you can see it over here. It's, it's in PDF. Okay. And then the, the CV that you download over here is also, it's in PDF. Okay. Um, I just wanted to quickly uh, say that if anybody needs a little bit more comprehensive support, I obviously this is one of the facets of my business. So you're absolutely welcome to contact me if you if you need sort of an hour of coaching, obviously, then it's going to be uh, one on one. Um, and then, oh, uh, another thing that Holiston is doing, if you do follow us on social media, hashtag doing good is good business. So we really, I was inspired to give back to the community after um, the lockdown happened and just wanting to support people because 
Guys, working in psychometric assessments and recruitment, I'm on the front line in terms of seeing what the job market is like, and it's not very pretty at the moment. Okay, people need help. So what I have done is I've committed to giving a lot of resources. Um, I've even I've, I've made available the professional CV templates that I utilize. Um, I, I don't believe in hanging on to stuff. I believe in blessing others, and in return, you are blessed. So if you feel that somebody could benefit from this session because I am thinking of holding it again in future because it was so popular. If you feel that somebody could benefit from this session but they cannot afford to attend, please email me and tell me just quick, quick what the story is, what the situation is. I'm more than happy to support as many people as I can, okay? Um, obviously, not the whole world. I mean, if you have attended my workshops in the past, you will understand that I don't just do pro bono for nothing <laughs> um, because I want that person to also be committed to the process. I want them to value my time because I value my time. But if there is somebody that needs some support in this moment in time, please just let me know. And then in conclusion, if I could please ask you to, yeah, just give us a shout out on your favorite social media platform. We are on Facebook. Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, obviously, if you enjoyed today, please give us a shout out. i um, thinking about doing another one in the future, like I said, because it was very popular. And I would really appreciate the free PR. But without any further ado, thank you ever so much for your time today. If you've got any questions, pop me an email, Najena at And um, yes, you will receive your login details a little bit later on today. Have a wonderful Wednesday and I'll see you on social media. Take care. Bye-bye.